Hello, my name's Joy and Edgar, and I'm the author of the book, Setting Up a Home Car Workshop. Now, when I was writing the book, one of the most interesting chapters was on home workshop layouts. Where do you put things in the workshop so it really is effective when you're working in that place? Over the last 25 years, I've set up five different home car workshops, and in each case, I had to really think, where will I put things so that it's effective as a working space? What I'd like to do now is to have a look at a few of those different layouts. Some of them are in quite small spaces, some of them are in larger spaces. So I think whatever the space you've got available, you'll find this interesting for your home workshop as well. So the first home workshop that I want to cover was only about 23 by 14 feet, or 7 by a bit over 4 metres. It's really only a bit bigger than a normal single car garage. And if we have a look at it, we can see that in fact we couldn't even fit the car in. The car had to stay outside when it was being worked on. Now, you can tell it must have been in a mild climate, and it was, because if it snows for six months of the year, that would make it really, really difficult. If you have a look at that workshop plan in more detail, you can see that two workbenches are used, and both of them are island designs. The red rectangle is my main workbench, and to the right of that is the longer, narrower welding bench. Now, using workbenches which are islands, in other words, not pushed up against a wall, means you can put big items on them. You know, you can have a whole sheet of material and it can be overhanging the edges of the workbench. And in fact, if you look at the scale, you can see that the red island is only about one and a half by one metre, about three by five feet. So it's not a very big bench at all. You can see that pushed against the wall are the things that I don't have to get behind. Up against that top wall, power tool bench, a bandsaw, a mill, and a lathe. Coming this way, coming to the south of the plan, you can see that that wall is lined with shelves. Now, what if you've got a, a workshop of that size, but you really do want to be able to fit a car into it? Well, this plan shows the same area. It's, the, it's a workshop of the same size, but you can see this time I've been able to fit a car into it. Now, you can also see that there's only now one workbench and one power tool bench, and both of those are pushed against the wall. Neither of them are islands. If you look at the space between the shelves and the car, you can see it's less than a metre. So things are getting pretty squeezy, but still a viable workspace. That power tool bench could also be a welding bench, but you'd certainly want to throw a, a cover over the car, uh, a, a old old sheet or something even thicker so that none of the welding sparks were going to impinge on the paintwork. Now those two workshops, uh, those two layouts were actually quite small spaces to be working in. What if you've got a bigger space? I mean we all want to have a bigger space but sometimes cost and sometimes uh, other constraints prevent that from occurring. So what if you do have a bigger space? Let's have a look at another one now which is actually in a bigger area and it's my next work, uh, workshop, the one that I built, I actually built this workshop from scratch. I built the building. I didn't do the concrete uh, slab, but I did everything else. Now, when I designed this one, I decided I wanted to have space for two cars and they could be at one end. In this case, they're at the eastern end. And the other half of the workspace was all going to be a workshop, workshop um, shelves, workshop benches and power tools. And you can see I've got the same workbench and the same welding bench because I just transferred them from one workshop to the next. You can see I've taken the same sort of approach, the lathe, the mill and the bandsaw, the power tool bench, all pushed up against a wall because I don't need to get behind them. And you can see what looks to be an absolutely enormous metal folder. And in fact, in the real world, it really was enormous. What happened is I bought that metal folder secondhand uh, online and uh, the photos didn't really show how big it was. And so I went to get it with my trailer and it wouldn't even fit in a 6x4 trailer. I had to go to the local hardware store and get some great big long timber bolts um, so that when the forklift deposited on them, uh, it wasn't going to fall off the back of the trailer. So it was a bigger tool than I really wanted. It was a bigger tool than I really needed. But when I got it home and when I got it into my workshop, I just loved using it. It was just the most magnificent sheet metal folder you've ever seen. But you can see it certainly did take up quite a lot of space. The next workshop that I want to show you is one that is my current workshop. And you can see 
this is a, a bigger uh, workplace again but you can also see that the car has been pushed outside now I can fit it into the current workshop you can see it will slide forward roll forward through that door and just fit into that space but you can also see that really the, the tools that I've bought um, the, the machinery that I've bought is really starting to intrude on the space for a car even though it still will fit in so there's that workbench again the same red rectangle there's the welding bench again slightly shortened because I thought it didn't have to be as long the mill and the lathe again pushed against the walls and you can see this this workshop runs a lot of shelving shelving around the north shelving around the northwest corners now you can also see I've added some tool chests on wheels the the green rectangles you can see I've added a second power tool bench a wood lathe a metal folder it's not the same metal folder as we saw earlier it's it's a much smaller one um, when I moved from one state to another the enormous one had to get sold I must admit to having tears in my eyes when I saw that one disappearing and you can see I've also added a bead blaster and a metal guillotine so you can see all these different workshops have got different layouts so what are some of the common things that they have I've talked about island workbenches where your material can overlap the edges so you can work on bigger items than the actual workbench but what I haven't talked about is something else that you should think of doing when you're organizing your workshop working out where things are going to go practice in your head doing a particular job now in my workshops I often seem to be making brackets or doing small metal work and I'll, I'll lay that out on my island workbench I'll take it to the guillotine to cut I might also take it to a, a vertical bandsaw to cut I might go over to the drill press and drill some holes in it and then I might go over to the linisher the belt sander and smooth the edges take, take the rough uh, edge off the bracket now how far do I have to walk to do those things if I'm walking all over the workshop it's just crazy it, it takes a lot longer it wears you out if I'm just moving from one bench to another or just turning around and working on the machine tool that's behind me taking one step to another machine tool it's a lot easier workspace to operate in it's also easier because you can lay rubber mats out in the area where you're standing the most which reduces your fatigue if I now need to go and get a nut and a bolt to attach that bracket how far do I have to go to those shelves to get those items as well if I'm doing body work on a car how much room have I got around the car okay body work always needs a lot more work than mechanical work on a car with body work you need to be swinging slide hammers and using panel beating hammers and dollies and so on so think about the sort of operations that you do most commonly in your workshop for me it's making things I do that more than anything else think about the sort of work you're doing on your car in your car home workshop and therefore how much room you need around it these things help you design and lay out your workshop and if you put that forethought in it, it'll just become a delightful place to work it's just works so much more seamlessly when you've considered those particular ideas have a look at some of the other plans that I have in the home workshop book I've got plans from uh, other Australian uh, home workshops I've got a plan from a, an American home workshop I've got some great examples in there people were really helpful in sending me photos and diagrams and plans of what they thought worked well for them and I was really delighted to be able to to feature them in the book thank you